السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ جزاکم اللہ خیر ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ کلینلینیس صفائی تہارت ایز اے مومن دس از پارٹ آف اور ریلیجن ٹو بی کلین نیٹ ناٹ فرام اپیئرنس شوڈ بی کلین فرام انر اسپرچل کلیننگ ایز ویل If we are having a nice perfume and good dress up and we thought we are neat and clean, no, we should be purify our heart as well. Today we will talk about different uh, aspects of the cleanliness, uh, how we can get, we will use the word taharat for that. Taharat is for the Muslims and you understand that, that it means a pure cleanliness, a purifying yourself. Uh, your appearance, your physique, your clothes, your body, your environment, your house, your school, your street, everything, inshallah. Just, we will go step by step, inshallah. Our Prophet, Hazrat Muhammad, <laughs> yeah, he mentioned that the Safai, Taharat, is a half of your deen. If a person is clean, from the heart, his appearance as well, his atmosphere, his house as well. So his half a deen is complete. It's so important. It's a base of our deen. You can't say that he is a malang person, he is a darvesh person, he has a very dirty clothes and his hairs are just wandering here and there and with the dust and he is a, he is a Muslim? No. His half a deen is a cleanliness. In these days, the Western world is telling us that how you should sterilize your hands. No, we know that already. 1500 years ago, from Medina we got this lesson. Our deen, our mazhab, our religion based on cleanliness, on taharat, on nazafat, on safai. Not only, they are just uh, emphasis on the... Uh, Uh, your appearance but our deen ha- he want us to purify yourself from core of your heart that's the purification that's the taharat and our prophet Hazrat Muhammad <laughs> a clean person will enter the jannah only a clean and neat person will enter the jannah yes I have our deen And the person who is neat and clean from inside and outside, he will be able to enter to the Jannah. So we have to be ready to go to the Jannah. On the first step, we need to clean ourselves. And Allah Kareem, definite, he likes the person who is neat and clean. We can say that that person is, oh, he, he or she is very poised, very deendar, but she is dirty, or she has ugly clothes and... Her nails are uh, so dirty and uh, we are saying that, oh, she don't have a time, she is praying all the time and she is busy with the fasting and helping the people, that's why she is dirty. No. First, if we are doing anything for the deen or not, we have to have focus on our physique and purify ourselves. Then we will be able to do the preaching and helping the people. If somebody is taking care of me and he is dirty and has a bad smell, I don't want him to, her to touch me, right? If you are helping the people, you should be neat and clean. This is the basic thing. And our Prophet Hazrat Muhammad wasallam mentioned in the Hadith, you, sh- you should be clean yourself as much as is possible. You should be take care 100% of yourself. And one other place he mentioned, if you purify your physique, Allah Kareem will purify your heart. Your effort should be, and you're focusing on your parents. You can do your laundry, cut your nails, clean your nose, brush your teeth, comb your hair, iron your clothes, And then Allah Kareem purify you from inside. Whatever you can do, you can do, work hard on that. Then He will help you to purify. This is the uh, root to the inside. 
from outside to inside. If you purify yourself, then ultimately Allah Kareem cleans you inside. And on one other place, Allah Kareem, uh, our Prophet Hazrat Muhammad وسلم, in his hadith he mentioned al, al, Wallahu juhibbul mutatahireen Allah Kareem love the person who is clean and neat. How much lucky we are. We keep ourselves clean for the people. Oh, I want to change my clothes, have lipstick on, powder, taking shower, coming to the class, that the kids have a good impression. If my niyat, my intention is this, that Allah Kareem likes me. Because it's his order. It's a sunnah of the Prophet. Then I get ajar and reward. Same thing we talked about the previous lecture, about the intention, about the niyat. You are purifying yourself. Oh, teacher is coming. We have to be ready and uh, fixing yourself. It's ajar, but not as much as you are focusing on the connection with Allah Kareem. I am purifying myself because Allah Kareem loves the neat and clean people. I purify, I am taking care of myself because Allah Kareem. Because there is in one of these our Prophet mentioned, Wallah, Allahu Jamilun, Yuhibbul Jamal. Allah is beautiful. He loves the beauty. Because He is beautiful. He loves the beauty. If we are taking care of ourselves and uh, in other uh, places, uh, lots of places in the Quran, in the Hadith, we find thousands of places, lots of um, incidents and the stories of the make people that how much they focus on the cleanliness, they're taking care of themselves. Think about me, every day I am going five, six classes over the weekend, today I have to do six, six lectures, and if I'm saying, oh, I'm very busy, I'm working hard, I have lots of stuff at home to do as well, and I'm saying, no, I can run to the class in my pajama, how bad it looks like. I'm, I'm going, my duty for Allah Kareem, and I'm not taking care of myself. I know that Allah Kareem likes the beautiful people, neat and clean people, purified people. Why I'm not focusing on myself? The first thing, I don't need to step out with the dirty dress and dirty look. If, if I'm like a sleepy person here without shower and without a good dressing, I'm here, you guys don't want to listen to me and don't want to look at me. means if you're looking at me, you feel clumsy as well and lazy. If the person is sleepy and lazy, that's why in the driving seat, you, you remember your daddy asked you, go to the back seat, you are sleepy, I don't want to sleep. If a passenger seat right beside the driver, somebody is sleeping, driver want to sleep too. That's why they don't want to ask the person to sit on the front, who is little lazy. They said, okay, I need a fresh person who can talk with me and I can be awake and have a good driving scales. I want to use that. I don't want to be face a bad accident or incident or anything. If I am lazy, you guys are lazy too. This is the influence. If you guys are lazy, not in good shape, I am lazy because I don't want to teach if you guys are not alert. And you are alert because you are with the whistle and wuzu and you have a neat dress, you are sitting here and you are mentally prepared to listen. So it's understandable that uh, Deen focus, always focus, always focus on the cleanliness. And how we can keep ourselves clean, there's lots of things we can go one by one. There is two types of cleanliness. We can, shoot, I use the wrong marker. I hope you can clean that. We're talking about the cleanliness, about the taharat today, right? So th there's a two steps of taharat, of pakizgi. Number one, you have to clean, physical cleaning. Cleaning yourself. And number two is house cleaning. Your house or your home. This is a safai, this is a taharat of your house, taharat of your body. And we will go one by one and inshallah we will learn a lot today. Our Prophet said, if you clean yourself, Allah Kareem clean 
your inner side you are cleaning your appearance allah cream purify you from your heart and first of all to cleaning ourselves we have to save ourselves in the washroom basic thing every person even old young boy girl even the prophets they have to go to the washroom there is no choice if a person is saying i'm not eating okay he is fasting that's fine two days three days 24 hour 36 hour that's fine but he has to go to the washroom and in the washroom the basic thing is you have to save yourself from the drops of the urine because lots of people in the dozakh in the hell because of the drops of the urine over here in north america in europe wherever you go there is not a proper system to go to the washroom because for the guys always standing and doing their business because the washroom shapes are like that but you have to save yourself from the drops of the urine that's the major thing takes nausubilla to us to the dozakh if this is a this if a person is not saving himself from this things and he, he will enter to the doors of nauzubillah and our prophet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's it's not it's a jaiz if there is no choice you can stand up and do your business but you have to save yourself whatever the precautions are you can take because we are living in the society we have no choice we can't we can't uh, build our washrooms we can do anything but we have to save ourselves from urine to spill it around and when you leave the washroom you should make sure that it's neat and clean for the next person who is coming flush no laziness use the toilet paper use the paper towel and save your dress you use the uh, washroom tissues a lot take a bottle of water with you because you don't want not to ruin your dress because you have to go to the masjid you have to pray in the school in the offices if you are not keeping a bottle of water with you how can you clean yourself that's very basic thing it's very easy for ladies they are having a bottle of water in the purse always for the boys they can have in the hand and nobody will ask you the question why are you holding the bottle and use the uh, washroom tissue a lot to clean yourself and that's very basic thing if you usually for the little kids we need to train them when you do, they go to the washroom i know i have a babies at home too when they go to the washroom they just run do their business and they run back just put, putting their boxer up and pant up and that's it because we need to train them to clean yourself properly park yourself because if we are not training our kids i'm teaching you i know you guys know everything but if i am telling you you can tell you to your future generations to train them when we train them uh, potty train with the get we are getting rid of the diaper from the kid we need to train them that this is a perfect and final procedure you have to enter the washroom with the dua left foot in wash your hands first then going to the toilet doing the business and then cleaning with the uh, washroom tissue and then with the water then wash your hand again when you fix the pant wash your hands again then right foot out and then ghufrana ka this is the proper training from the very basic thing and we have to save ourselves from the bad habits and you don't need to uh, some kids i saw there uh usually over here when there is a snow and usually it's rain now the raining season is start and the kids and the boys usually they are just running in the, the water splashing the water and that water outside on the sidewalks or on the grass if you are splashing that putting your feet loudly and forcefully on the water it the splashes of the water the drops of the water it ruins your pants because that water there is lots of dogs and cats you saw on the sidewalk parents are cleaning their stuff but their urine it's on the sidewalks when there is a rain every dirty things it goes to the grass and wherever the water is 
just a ditch of water. If you are putting, I saw the school kids, they are coming, they are just making a fun, putting their feet on the water, and that water splashed to their pants and ruined their dresses because of that pet's urine. It dried on the road and when this rain, think about how dirty that water is. Save yourself from that. And the second thing for the, we are talking about the physical cleaning. You have to take shower every single day. Hazrat Usman Ghani, Razillah Ta'ala Anhu, he was the closest companion of our Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I taught you in the last class, Azad Bibi Rukaiya and Umay Kalsoom, they both are, were in the nikah of Azad Uswani Ghani. He was very clean and full of haya. This Sahabi was very clean. And Azad Uswani Ghani was used to take shower every single day. If you are uh, unable to take shower every single day, uh, sometimes kids are sick, sometimes they have a cough, or fever, something any reason you are late from school you can't but at least once a week or alternate days once a week and best day is a friday to take a good shower thoroughly clean yourself and regular is the best at once a week you are taking shower and second thing is to cut the nails nails are very basic thing to keep them clean at least once a week we need to cut it. If it's not possible, you guys are sometimes busy, sometimes you don't find the nail cutter, then where to go? At least in two weeks. Cut your nails, and I know I have a kids at home too. They cut their fingernails, but their feet, their toes, they forgot it. And they are like a chimpanzee. Both hands and feet. And nails once a week. Thursday is the best day for cutting nail. Thursday. I will tell you the hadith about that. We will go a little forward then. And this is a sunnah, not only the sunnah of our prophet. Nail cutting is a sunnah of all the prophets. More than 100,000 prophets are on the planet. It's a sunnah of every single prophet. If we are not cutting the nail, we are keeping the nail, it means we are denying the sunnahs of all the prophets. And we should be careful about cutting the nails. Usually moms are saying, and some kids are keeping one nail of the, this lady, this is what is the pinky finger. The boys, I saw the boy in my class, he has a big nail for the small finger. Why? Mom said it's a fashion. It's not a fashion. It's like a monkeys, animals. Make sure to cut the nails. And when to cut the nail? You can cut on the Friday too. That's fine. That's a mustahab. That's the mustahab. It's a Allah Kareem likes it. Our Prophet likes it. And our Prophet as Muhammad <laughs> Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam I used to cut once a while nails on the Friday as well because this is the day for the doing the purification from the body and in the hadith there's a lots of benefits if you cut the nails on the friday and uh, because if the person is cutting the nail it's a uh, translation of the hadith if your person is cutting the nail in the first one friday <coughs> till the next friday he is safe from all the hardships disease any obstacles any hardships, any barriers. Allah cream clean his way. Life will be easy for him. Nail cutting is not only the nail cutting. It's open the door of success for you. Anything is the sunnah of the Prophet. There is an inside. We don't know. There's inside lots of blessing. And there's another hadith as well. Our Prophet Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Hazrat Ali karam Allah wajho, Ali, cut your nails and the extra hairs on the Thursday and do ghusl and have a itar and the khushbu and change your dress on Friday. Because if the one day you are doing your thorough cleaning, you are cutting the extra hairs, extra nails, khushbu, changing dress, it might, it takes long for you. That's why you can cut your nails and the cleaning one day earlier and you can take a complete shower 
and the khushbu changing dress on the friday and you can spill it into two days thursday and friday there is a preference of the friday and the thursday both days for the cutting of the nails and our prophet said anybody who want a prosperity in the life he should cut his nail on thursday make it habit thursday evening write a note somewhere put alarm every thursday evening and you can mention allah kareem allah kareem i learned that this is a marfu hadith in fataul bari i am giving you the reference act as well and if you can't cut on one friday or thursday uh, you don't need to wait for the next friday it might it goes so faster so better be in the middle of the day, uh, day you can cut it but this is a preferred day is outside it's winter but inside it's so garmi yes how to cut the nails anybody knows the method of cutting the nails yes please loudly you start from the pinky finger yes no 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 you mixing up this is for the feet for the feet you cut from the uh, pinky finger right pinky come to the left pinky this is for the toe for the hands you have to start with the shahada finger shahada finger is the index finger its index and then you go to the middle taller finger tallest finger then right beside pinky pinky and then the other pinky two pinkies should be together finger to the pinky pinky to the pinky then other index then left thumb and the right thumb these two two thumbs are together these pinkies are together you got it you are starting from the shahada finger index finger of the right hand side then you are going to the backward bigger finger then right beside pinky then pinky then pinky again then coming all the way to the left thumb and then right thumb on the end it's very easy two you just remember when i was young i remember two pinkies together and two thumbs together they comes together they are pair starting from the this is not uh, there is no pro- proper uh, sunnat to cut the nails keep this in mind as well this is the method of the uh, companions and the later uh, pious people and the sulha and the nate people they cut on this way it's lots of blessing we can follow that too but if you want to cut whatever style you you can go ahead there is no guna for that okay our uh, prophet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam cut the finger uh, nails on any way doesn't matter but if we are following we can following the method of the any nate person and this is ongoing in the riwayat in the stories and i am following that and it's in the books and there is a reference as well you can cut on this way this is the method in the fatai bari i am giving to the arghuniyatul talibin if somebody need the reference and that's the reference and uh, some kids they have a bad habit what they are doing they are cutting the nails with the mouth the teeth oh that's not good all the germs in the nails you go to the washroom you clean yourself it might you just wash your hand properly you are going do, doing the gardening even if you have a gloves it might there is something in your nails stuck you are cleaning doing the broom something stuck you are picking the grocery there is some food particle or something stuck in your nail and you are eating with the mouth and this is the under the nail this is the flit depo and this is the mm, uh, house of the germs that's why you don't this is this is not favorable this is not a cleanliness to cut the, lots of kids i saw that there is a classroom they are sitting they are just cutting their nails and you have to i know this is out of control for the kids they are doing that but always keep your fingers busy with something if the fingers are busy you have a pen in your hand you are writing the notes doing something or holding the two hands together just tie them together because sometimes it's out of control kids are just going hand is going to the mouth if they are thinking something nostalgic mood uh, they are tense they are thinking about something uh, there is some crucial time there is lots of time in the life we don't have always a smooth journey 
this is a test, this is a challenge, this is a life, sometimes exams, sometimes parents are not happy, sometimes teacher is in bad mood, sometimes we got a bad marks, our GPA is not good, we are tense, but it doesn't mean that you can bite your nails, no. This is unhealthy and this is uh, our Prophet Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa for that. And if somebody he is cutting the nail with the teeth, is biting the nails, it, it is, it is bad for the health as well. And lots of ulama, they wrote that if a person, the person who is cutting the nail, he never be prosper. He is always poor. Poverty. This is nahusat. Never have. If your friend has this bad habit, just try your best to change his habit. And we have to throw the nails. I saw we are cutting the nails and we are throwing into the bin, dustbin. No. Anything part of our body, our hair, our nails, we should respect them. We are not throwing them in the trash. No. We have to have, if we are cutting the nails, put on the tissue paper, a paper towel, and just bury them in the backyard, in the corner, with the fence or somewhere. Just dig and put it over there. If there is a winter, just collect them in the shopping, shopper bags, shopping bag, and in the summer, you get a chance, just bury them. Because this is a sunnah, you can't throw them, because everything relevant to the human being, they have respect. It's the disrespect, it's the disgrace of your nails and hair and you're grow, grow, uh, throwing them in the dustbin. Uh, Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar, he was a close sahabi of our Prophet Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, whenever he cut his nails and the hair, he always bury them. This is the most, this is the favorite thing. You can, this is not a sunnah, this is a favorable. Because I told you the reason, this is a respect of our nails and hair. I know, that's fine. Lots of kids, they are throwing them here and there. And how to take care of your hairs? First of all, to cut your hairs. I know lots of daddy over here, they are cutting the hairs, the kids. I know, I have kids at home too, because there is lots of snow, weather is so bad usually. Daddy has a machine and in the washroom they are asking, okay, come and kids are saying, daddy, I want to go to the barber and do my stylish hairs. When they are kids, daddies are doing, but when the kids are in the high school, like, our Umar, your uh, daddy is cutting the hair or you are going to the barber? Barber, I know, yes. Asim? Barber. Barber, yes. Barber. Sadiq? Barber? Barber. Daniel? Barber? Imti? Why everybody is going to the barber? You are spending so much money. Twenty dollars? Yeah, it's so much money. Ask your daddy. In university you can go to the barber when you earn yourself. Right? I, I'm always asking my kids, to, your daddy will cut your hair. And they can cut each other's, right? We have to respect our hairs, right? This is a sunnah. And we have to oil and comb our hairs too. Don't leave them just wandering in the air. D with the dust like a majnu, no. You have to comb, oil the hair. If you are not oiling the hair, it's a dryness. And it's a dryness of the mind too. If you want to be a good IQ level, you have to put lots, lots of oil. I'm not telling you to put the oil and go to the school with the sarsu oil and kids are just have a bad smell. At home, over the weekend, put lots, lots of oil in your hair and this raises your IQ level. It makes your mind strong. Our Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always have a double layer of the cap. One cap is, you guys have a mask cap, right? Second cap, he has a cloth under the topi always, which is, which is like a dipped with the oil. And then there is another topi on the top. And you guys forgot the oil. You guys are thinking this is old fashioned, it's old style, that mummy is saying, okay, oil your hair. No, do the massage. 
if you want to be a strong mind and a kavi and the intelligent and the best IQ level, you have to take care of your hair. And how to, how to cut the hair, what, which style is the sunna, that's very important. First of all, you have to cut your hair, there's a three styles. Our Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has a long hair too, long hair like a till the shoulder. But you, you don't need to have a hair till the shoulder and you are just like a girl in front of you. No, this is not the style. You have to... Ramisa, everything is okay? No. I hope there is no mouse on, under my feet. <laughs> no, it is? Cockroach? I think I saw You saw something? Yeah, there. there. Cockroach? Something? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> because I'm your teacher. I know you guys are looking at something and I feel it. Okay. How to cut your hairs, Umar? No. It's are you there. sure? No. Oh, okay. Uh, unless it's not hair. Yes. Uh, for the hair, there is uh, different styles. I tell you which are the sunna. First of all, long hair, you can have that. You can have that, but you have to oil them and comb it back to the back shoulder on your back. Not in front of you, always on in front of your face. I saw lots of kids, they are doing their homework and hair are on their mouth, they can't see properly, they are irritating, they are fixing their hairs all, all the time. No, with the aisle properly calm on the back till the shoulders, you can have that. If you like the long hair, it's allowed in the sunnah. But properly taken care, not wandering here and there, no. Not like a jungle on the air on the head, properly calmed and oiled. And the second thing, you have to fix them from the middle always. Your mom, your line, your cheer should be in the middle, not on the side. Why not on the side? Our Prophet, Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was used to having the, on the side, just like Umati has, and on the side, our, our Sadiq is, he was used to do that. When he came to the Makkah, Medina, from Makkah to Medina, after migration, and he saw all the Jews and the other communities, they are fixing their hair, and they having their mong, their lion, their cheer on the left hand side. And our Prophet said, we are different from the other communities. We don't want a similarity with that communities. That's why from now on, I am doing the mong in my middle. And this is the sunnah. If you're doing with this niyat, you get ajar and reward from the middle. And the other thing, guys should not be cut their hair from, from the bottom. It's like all clean shaved from the middle. It has a little bit higher and then from the very top, it's a spikes and there's a big no. All are small, that's a sunnah all shaved are all like a middle style are all like a long uniformity i know you guys don't like uh, this is usually daniel and asim but this is the thingy all small all shaved are all long you got my point that's just, i'm telling you the sunnah you get ajar when you are having and in other hadith, our Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a person who is having, a boy who is having the hair like a girl's, Allah Kareem don't like it. And that person is away from the rahmat of Allah Kareem. If you are having the resemblance with the girl, you are having a breeds like a girl's, chutia, ponies, hair catch, things make a resemblance with the girl then a guy will be away from the rahmat of Allah Kareem, from the blessing and from the barakat. With the, with the style, why you want to take this risk? We want to be in the shadow of the blessing of Allah Kareem always. You have to keep all these stuff in your mind. How to calm your, uh, sorry, oil your hairs. This is a sunnah as well. Our Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always put the oil in the palm of the left hand. 
विद द राइट हैंड विद द टॉप टिपी फिंगर्स ही डिप द टिप्स ऑफ द राइट हैंड इन द लेफ्ट हैंड पॉम्स ऑयल एंड फर्स्ट ही ऑयल द आई ब्रोज बोथ आई ब्रोज इट रेज योर आई क्यू लेवल देन योर आई लैशिस your eyesight will be good and then with the oil dipped finger he massage his hairs three steps eyelashes eyebrows and then and forehead as well because all your mental or brain networking is with the eyes with the hair with the forehead if you are massaging your forehead your head your eyebrows eyelashes it's increase your uh, um, eyesight you makes you smart bright and you have a quick understanding because this is a sunna today everybody is going to the habib general store and buying the bottle of oil okay and tomorrow is sunday ask your mummy do your massage and massage not only in the hair in your Uh, bottom of the feet as well if you want to have a good sleep if you want to be relaxed always massage your feet on the bottom it makes you fresh and active and you will be smart inshallah you have a good memory sharp memory you never forget the stuff if you oil your body properly and your belly button oil your belly button every single day with the vaseline with the lotion if there is oil i know your washroom don't have any kind of oil all the lotion all the cosmetics but no oil oil is a sunna olive oil is easily available on every single store even dollar ama 225 a very nice beautiful bottle keep it in your washroom always oil your uh, belly button too because when the kid is not in this world all is food from where from the belly button before his birth and when the baby is here we forgot the belly button this is a connection with the whole limbs of the body with the belly button always oil the belly button if you want active smart sharp and no pains in the body that's why the kids are so lazy they always want to sit on the sofa and they have put their back on the back oh my god they are so tired always because you guys are not oiling your body did you see your daddies they are taking the car to the always to the uh, workshop to oil it change the oil and uh, olden oil is always a dirty black like a grease car is like a body it is running you are running take care of your body oil your body and do this because of the sunna If you are following the sunnah, you get reward, ajr, and sawab, inshallah. To keeping the calm with you in your back, school back, it's a sunnah. Our Prophet always, as Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, always has a calm with his. If he is traveling with him, always. And once there was knock at the door, and our Prophet, as Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was walking to open the door, and as the baby Aisha Sadiqa was in the middle of the. Uh, house she ha- having a big bowl full of water and our prophet while he was leaving to open the door he he looked in the water and fix his hair because there is a, a reflection in the water like a mirror and he fix his hair and then he walked out and when he come back our bibi aisha sadi cast ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam why you fix yourself in the water she asked the question and he said allah is jamil and yuhibbul jamal allah is beautiful he loved the beauty that's why i'm fixed before you step out you have to wash your face in the mirror and this is a sunna our prophet did that he looks his face in the water even whatever the available is you don't need to jump out um, in a, a dirty means lazy and clumsy situation fix yourself when you are stepping out because you have you should have a good impression as a muslim on the other communities as well and what else you need to do uh, you have to use lots lots of tail this is a sunna 
you have to when you are putting the oil and tail on your hair and the eyebrows and eyelashes you have to start with bismillah always with the right hand side with the bismillah you have to oil your beard as well and start the oiling to the beard under the lip first this called in arabic dadi bucha this is the small thingy you have to start from here it's strong your lips it's strong your teeth it's strong your jaws always from here you have to oil here too and then the whole beard eyelashes eyebrows and your hairs as well and what else you need to do you have to have do comb in your hairs kangi karna this is a sunna our, our prophet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he once he was sitting in the gathering a person came with the dirty clothes and the ugly lazy face and our prophet said he don't have anything to wash his clothes means he don't have any soap and sabun to wash his clothes and ask him to go and take shower wash your clothes do the comb oil your hair and then come back to the gathering you don't need to run this is not a cool style god forbid the boys are saying ma it's cool it's casual dressing i don't like the casual dressing you should look nice smart because you are muslim very active kids and the person is looking at you he want to talk to you you should be impressed the first thing before you speak is your dressing your personality you are speaking later first he has a look on your dress i am always giving you my example if i am in this situation you don't want to listen to me first of all you need to take care of yourself it's it's a right of your body to fix it properly and this is sunna the major thing this is sunna and keep the comb in your bag as well and if you need you can comb your hair many times not only once you said oh i comb my hair in the morning and now it's uh, windy and hairs are just running around and you don't care no you can do your comb more than once and what is another sunna about calm when our prophet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was going to bed at night he always calm his hair and when we are going to the bed we said oh we are going to the bed nobody is looking at us no calm your hair this is a sunna as well and now the teeth you have to take care of your teeth too what do you think we can go next lecture with that too with the cleans cleansiness because this time is over i have to go to the other class too inshallah allah kareem